Hello and welcome to Texas Style Cuisine. Today we have a special treat for you. We're going to show you how to make uh, guacamole and pico de gallo. And I have my daughter here with me. She's home from college. Uh, she came in for the ZZ Top concert last night. So as you can see, we have our, our new ZZ Top shirts on. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to get started here. Uh, she's kind of the girl that always makes this for us here at the house. And now that she's been gone, uh, my wife and I have been doing it ourselves. But uh, she has a great way of doing it. Comes out really good. So I'm going to be her assistant today. And we're going to see if we can get some uh, fresh guacamole and pico de gallo made. We have some really good ingredients here today. We have the uh, avocado, jalapenos, fresh garlic. I have some Roma tomatoes. And in this one, I have cilantro, onions, lemons. We use lemon instead of lime in ours. A lot of people use lime. We like the taste of the lemon better. So we're going to use it. On my tomatoes, what we look for in tomatoes is a nice red tomato. I like to use the vine ripened tomatoes, but this morning uh, at the grocery store, they were not red at all. They were still greenish and kind of orange looking. So the Romas were the reddest tomato I could get. When we make this pico de gallo, we want it to look like the Mexican flag. We want it to be red, green, and white, very vivid colors. So we make sure we do use white. Some people will use yellow onions, but we use the white ones to get the nice vivid color. Also, the uh, white onion has, it's not quite as sweet, has a little sharper taste to it. And we use it because it works much better in Pico de Gallo to give you the flavor that you're looking for in it. So anyways, you ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right. We're going to start on the uh, Pico de Gallo. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start taking the uh, end buttons off all these tomatoes. You know, some people will not uh, take those off. It's worth your time. Take them off. Nobody wants to eat that. So we're going to take those off. Then I'll pass them to her, and she can go ahead and start slicing these up and dicing them for the uh, pick of the gallo itself. But all I do is, is I take a knife and gather it in my hand here and just cut that end out. All right? Just like that. So what I do is when I'm chopping up my tomatoes is I'll slice them each in half, and basically, you can just do what you want to do and what size you want. We like ours not too big, not too small. So I just cut them up in little slivers, basically, and I'll just chop them up this way and just make fine little bitty chunks. And what I'm doing right now is I'm going to dice up the uh, white onion. And it's kind of the basic way most people have diced onions before. But what I do is, is I cut just the... Uh, top off where the stem of the onion was. You can kind of see that right here is this was the stem and the roots down here. So I cut the stem off so that it would sit flat on the table. And then as I have my onion here, I cut straight through the root bulb and that holds that root bulb will hold this onion together. So what I'm going to do now is, is I have it cut in half. I have the paper peeled off of it. And now I'm going to cut Oh, about a quarter inch dice. I don't want real big chunks of onion. So I'm going to cut quarter inch slices across this onion. I don't cut all the way to the root. I go about three fourths of the way through. And then take my knife. And again, do not cut all the way to the root. Cut almost to the root, about quarter inch wide spaces. Turn it sideways now. And again, quarter inch. And there we go. Have a nice half of a diced onion now. Dice up the other half. And with this other end, you know, I think you with it. If you want to go ahead and chop it up, uh, put it in there. Some people don't want the random sizes as much. So they may put this in a soup or a stock or something later. For us, that's not a problem. I'm just going to cut around that root. We don't want the tough part up under the root in there. Again, that's not pleasurable to eat. So we are not going to put it in there. So. Half of my onion's done. Now I'm going to put about half this onion in there. And I'm going to save the rest of it to see kind of what onion to tomato ratio we want. But I'm going to take this and keep it to the side. And if we want more onion, we can put it in there. But that's a whole diced onion, and we're just going to see approximately how much we need. If we don't use it all, there's always things we can use diced onion with. May make some Mexican rice in a little while. Need it for that. Uh, I'm going to start doing the pico. Now, I mean the pico. Excuse me. I'll start doing the cilantro for the pico. Now, these are. This is a nice uh, cilantro. Actually, it's got nice tender roots on it. 
Sometimes when you buy your cilantro, it's got a bigger, tougher root. The thing to remember is the cilantro root is very flavorful. Not the root, but the stems. And so if you're cooking with that, if you're using it where it's not a presentation issue, use those stems. Cook with them. They are very flavorful, much more so than the leaves. But since this is a presentation factor, I am going to cut the stems just off the end. And then I found the best way to... Uh, dice up cilantro is by rolling it up. You roll it up into a ball and then you can chop it both directions and that'll give you some nice small chunks of cilantro. This is similar to what we would call a chiffonade cut. All right, now we have our onions, our tomatoes, and our cilantro are all in there. And we're going to add some jalapenos. And I've got some nice big jalapenos today. How many are we going to put in it? Uh, we can start off with two. 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 Start off with two. We'll try it. If it's not hot enough, then we can add a third or a fourth. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut the stem off. Get rid of it, and then we're going to cut this jalapeno in half down the middle. Now it's much easier to de-seed. I usually just run my knife down the sides and then take it out like that and get that membrane out. A lot of your heat's going to be held in that membrane where the seeds are. Uh, some people you'll see, and I've done it before, is you can take a, just a regular tablespoon uh, and run it down there and rake all that out of there. But anyways, have a nice clean jalapeno now. These jalapenos, you are going to want to cut. It is to the way that you like it. But I always try and cut them a little thinner, and they're going to be a little more, more diced than, than anything else um, because they do get spicy. So I like to cut these a little smaller than everything else in the bowl when I'm cutting the jalapenos. Also, one interesting thing with jalapenos is, is that you're never real sure how hot they're going to be. So by starting with only a couple and adding, you don't have to worry about that wow factor. So anyways, we cut them slender. And also, by cutting them small, nobody gets a great big chunk of jalapeno. It's spread nicely through the pico. Okay, those two are done. Now we're going to stir it up a little bit and check for uh, heat. Of course, there's no seasonings in it yet, so it's not going to be the final finished product, but it will give us an idea of how the heat factor is going to be. This. All right, here's a bowl of corn chips. All righty, dust it out. Here you go, give it a try. How about that? Try it too. All right. Can we add another? I think we need Can we some add more. Another? We'll do one, okay? Let's try it out. Let me cut it up real quick, and then we'll get right back to you. I like that a lot better. A lot better? Got, got the heat you need? Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to start adding our seasonings. And to season this pico de gallo up, what we're going to use is, is black pepper, garlic powder, granulated garlic, and salt. We have a teaspoon of garlic. Mm -hmm. Teaspoon of salt. And a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Of black pepper. So let's sprinkle those in. And always remember, this is always to taste. I think every batch is never exact, but we wanted to give you kind of a starting place to work at. But uh, remember this, you can always add, you cannot take out. So she didn't put quite all the garlic in, so we may come back and use it. We're going to see how much garlic we need. And what I always try to do when I am seasoning pico or anything is I don't ever just dump it in one space. It makes it easier if you distribute it throughout. That way it kind of reaches everything and it's easier to stir in than it being in a clump. And while she's stirring that, I'm going to get the lemon ready. One thing we do pretty much always use is the juice of a whole lemon. And of course I press the lemon under my hand and roll it to help break up some of those cells that are holding the juice of the lemon. That way it juices out a lot easier, a lot better. Could you hand me the juicer? So I'm going to take this now, cut my lemon in half. 
put it in my juicer and get lemon juice. Like I said, we like lemon better than we do lime in our pico. So we are cutting up lemons today. Now, how are we on onions? Do we need to add some more of these onions? I think it looks good. Think it looks nice? Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. A lot of people do make pico differently. Some people will put more onion than tomato. Some people will put more pepper. Some people will put more tomato. And we are a little bit more of a tomato kind of person. We always want to put more tomato and then a little bit of the onion and then we'll put cilantro and then we'll have the tiny bit of jalapeno. You don't want to have too much pepper and too much flavor of one thing. And so you always want to try and make it kind of equal, but you can add to your liking. So we don't want to overpower. Don't overpower with one, one item. All right, let's All see. right, give it a taste. Let's see how we turned out. Nope. Mm, that's yeah. good. Let's do, uh, I think it needs a little more salt. What do you think? We can put some more salt in. Okay. Here you go. Use that salt right there. How much is that we have? This is another teaspoon of salt. So we might just do half of this and then taste it. Let's see. I think we use some more garlic. What do you think? I love garlic. You think it has yeah. enough? Let's try it. We'll try it. You just, just, just use all the garlic. Drop it in there. I'm a, I'm a big garlic fan, so. Get that stirred in. Okay. Let's try it again. All right, trying it again. Got one for you? That's good. That's good right there. I like that. Turned out real nice. I think maybe we can use a little bit of onion. I'm going to add a little bit more of our onion to it. Give us a little more red, white, and green. Let's stir that up. And then let's tip it up so everybody on the camera can see it. All right, now we have a bowl to put this in. We're gonna get that in there, a nice festive looking bowl. A lot of colors, kind of springtime. We're hoping for spring down here. We've had a cold spell kind of running through South Texas and now we're gonna to try to uh, get ready for spring. We don't have a big long winter here, but once again, some nice pico de gallo, Texas style cuisine. Uh, that's the way we do it. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna move the chips out of the way. We're gonna do your guacamole. And the reserved onion that I have, we like onion in our guacamole. So I'm going to save some of those. I'm going to mince those up real small for our guacamole. But we're going to get that going. Now, I have four big avocados. I think Haley's going to start working on those. So she'll start slicing those, getting them out of their, out of their skins. Um, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to work on mincing up some of this onion. We also have some fresh garlic. We like fresh garlic in ours and again we like lemon and we use salt and pepper uh, to season so we're gonna get all this going see if we can get this done and let y'all see how we make guacamole now one thing that we like is is a chunky guacamole we don't so we don't mash it some people have put it in the food processor and they'll blend it up real fine we like some some pieces of avocado in there so we don't do that but anyways you can see her she's getting those out of there real quick slicing through them takes her knife and kind of hits the seed and twists it out. So that's a good way to do that. And while she's doing that, I'm going to get us about three cloves of garlic here. All I'm going to do now is you can just take a spoon, you can take a fork, anything, a spatula will work also, and just take it out of its shell and throw it in a bowl. And what I'm doing is, is I'm simply cutting the stem, I guess not the end, really, it's a root bulb off of these garlic pods or cloves. 
Um, again, it's tough. Nobody wants it. But one thing we do is, is we like we don't like the chunks. And you can sit here and mince it up. It takes a while. But uh, the things that work really quick and really easy is is a good garlic press. And I think you have the garlic press over there. I do. So I'm going to press these three cloves of garlic. You can use granulated garlic if you wanted to. It works, it works good also. We just happen to like the fresh. This garlic press is from Pampered Chef. And I tell you what, I, I, don't, I don't sell for Pampered Chef, but I think it is the best garlic press out there. Uh, we've uh, got some expensive ones. We've got them different places. But now I have a few of these. I keep one in the barbecue trailer, one's here in the house. I have one that I take into my classroom where I teach culinary arts. And, and these are the ones we use. I just seem like they're the best ones, so we keep buying them. So I'm going to squeeze my garlic in. Just take my paring knife there and scrape it off. Open it up. And now all I have to do is, I don't know if you've done this before, just pull the paper out. And it's done. That whole clove is in there. So we're going to do this three times. All right. Kind of using the back side of my knife there, that way I don't dull my edge. Any? Now, what do we need next? We can do our spices. So, what this is, is we just put, since we put fresh garlic, you can use garlic powder, but fresh is always better. Um, we're going to do black pepper and salt. So, this is just a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and you can just throw that in there. And then a teaspoon of salt. Now, how much of this garlic do you want minced up? I mean, excuse me, the onion do you want min minced up? Um, maybe a quarter of that or half of that, maybe. All right, that right there. Yeah, just mince it up. Okay, I'm gonna mince this up real small. Cause again, we don't want a big chunk of onion in our guacamole. Like I said, we leave it a little bit chunky. And actually, why don't you go ahead and start mm -hmm. mashing that. And if you kind of have your guacamole already mashed, you don't have to worry about the onions getting in the way whenever you start mashing it. I found I've used forks to mash avocado uh, for guacamole, but we recently just got this potato masher, and it is a lot more convenient than a fork, and it's a lot less messy. So a potato masher works pretty good. If you have one of those small food processors, you could probably even run this onion through that because you want this onion just really, really fine. And I don't know about y'all, but I always get tired of chopping, 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 chopping. About ready for this? Mm -hmm. Looks small enough? Mm -hmm. All right. Go with our onion now. All right. Gonna get a spoon and stir that in. And the juice of a lemon? Mm -hmm. One whole lemon. One whole, whole lemon? Use. All right. So I have my juicer out here from a while ago when we did the pico de gallo. So again, roll it, get those juices flowing inside that lemon. Alrighty. Half a lemon and the other half. And again, you can use lime. If you, if you like lime better than lemon, lime may even be a more traditional, but, uh, here at the Stewart household, we like we like lemon, and that's the way we do it. Alrighty. And that's looking really good. Need the chips again? Let's try it out. All right, I got a big chip. You got a big chip? Got a very big chip. Let's give it a try. That's good. Don't need to add anything to it. Very good. It's got a very nice texture to it. Um, that's just what it looks like. So we, like we said, we like chunky guacamole, so it does have a little bit of chunks. If you're not a big chunky person, you can just continue to mash it or use a food processor or anything like that. But that is the finished product. All right. Let's put it in a bowl. Okay. There we go. Go ahead.
I'll clean up some of our mess while you're filling that bowl up. All right, there's our dishes for today. Pico de gallo, guacamole, and my daughter helping me. <laughs> Thank y'all for stopping by again. We really appreciate you visiting our, our uh, YouTube channel, and we appreciate you liking us, subscribing us. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, and follow us on those, and see what's going on with Texas-style cuisine. Thank you. Have a great day.